okay in the previous video i'm talking about uh, i talked about preeclampsia okay severe and mild you remember all these things okay now i'm going to move, talk about the etiology of preeclampsia before i move to etiology of preeclampsia i want to add that mainly in the first pregnancy preeclampsia happen okay in nulli paras woman okay or in the first pregnancy of a new husband so either from in the first pregnancy or a first pregnancy of a new husband okay so th this is mainly in a preeclampsia but it still can happen at multiparous women it still can happen especially if this woman has risk factors of preeclampsia risk factors like what like twins uh, like DM, like chronic hypertension, okay, these are all risk factors, okay, th that can superimpose or predispose for uh, preeclampsia in multiparous women, okay, but mainly it is in, in nulliparous women, first pregnancy or first pregnancy from a new husband. Now let's move to the etiology of, uh, etiology of preeclampsia. The first event to happen is a failure of cytotrophoplasts to adequately invade spiral arteries. Normally, the cytotrophoplasts, since it's a trophoplast, just invades. Oh, oops. Mm, okay, just. Okay. Uh, we don't need that anymore. Okay. The cytotrophoplast invades the spiral arteries of the placenta okay this is normally but if th there is a failure of the cytotrophoplast to invade the spiral artery okay adequately and establishes a uteroplacental circulation the normal invasion of the cytotrophoplast in the spiral arteries will establish a, a uteroplacental circulation that uh, supply the placenta uh, okay constitute the blood supply of the placenta so that that's normally happen but if we have a failure in uh, this mechanism then we will have a placenta ischemia of course because it's a decrease in the blood supply okay there is no uh, invasion of the spiral arteries or there is no adequate invasion of the spiral arteries okay so we'll have a placenta ischemia and that placenta ischemia may be due to other causes like maternal vascular diseases for example or immunological diseases so the preeclampsia is a disease of multi theories no one theory no definite theory uh, was able to know what is preeclampsia or to explain preeclampsia but uh, there is multiple theories the most important and the most strong one of them is failure of cytotrophoplast to invade the spiral arteries but maybe due to maternal vascular diseases or immunological diseases that make a placenta ischemia okay so the result is placenta ischemia a placenta ischemia by itself is an oxidative stress oxidative stress and this oxidative stress will release some toxins from the placenta so that's why we count a plus a preeclampsia as a toxemia because placental ischemia will make an oxidative stress that release some toxins and these toxins will enter the circulation so the circulation will have a lot of toxins and that will lead to widespread inflammation widespread inflammation endothelial dysfunction okay and activation of coagulation system these are the three main events the widespread inflammation endothelial dysfunction activation of coagulation system and these three will lead to the symptoms of preeclampsia okay so in white let's start uh, of them by one by one okay starting from the widespread inflammation widespread inflammation will lead to increasing in the prostaglandin f in the endothelin i and in the thromboxane thromboxane these three prostaglandin f endothelin I and the thromboxane which are vasoconstrictors okay so the toxemia of the preeclampsia will lead to increasing in the vasoconstrictors uh, prostaglandin F endothelin and thromboxane at the same time we will have a decrease 
in nitrous oxide and prostaglandin E2 and you know that these two are vasodilators okay potent vasodilators so we have a decrease in the vasodilators and an increase in the vasoconstrictors the net result will be a widespread vasospasm widespread vasospasm is the net result of this uh, mechanism and actually it is responsible for most of the symptoms of preeclampsia like what like a blood pressure okay vasospasm of course will lead to a blood pressure this is the first sign of uh, uh, preeclampsia then a glomerular filtration rate will decrease at the beginning okay and decrease in the glomerular filtration rate will lead to glomerular membrane okay it will decrease due to vasospasm of renal arteries okay and that will lead to a glomerular membrane damage okay the glomerular membrane damage actually will lead to protein urea uh, the, 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 does that remind you with something yes it is the second sign or uh, characteristic of uh, uh, preeclampsia so these are the two most important now let's move to uh, symptoms from above below okay if starting from the CNS system in CNS system the vasospasm will lead to visual disturbances like ischetoma okay or kinds of blindness okay so these are CNS symptoms of preeclampsia and if it present it indicates a severe preeclampsia now in the chest what, what can we see pulmonary edema pulmonary edema okay in the abdomen liver what will happen to liver there will be a focal hemorrhagic points and infarctions hemorrhagic and infarction points and these two will lead to increased liver function test increase in the liver enzymes what are these enzymes alt alanine transaminase and ast aspartate transaminase okay but never never depends on alkaline phosphatase alkaline phosphatase because alkaline phosphatase in pregnancy normally increases because it is produced normally from the placenta so alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase increasing in the liver function test with hemolysis and low platelet count thrombocytopenia will make what we call help syndrome do you remember help syndrome hemolysis elevated liver enzymes and low platelets thrombocytopenia okay and what is special about help syndrome that it occurs more in multiparas whereas the preeclampsia occurs more in nulliparas okay as i said before and it occurs in gestational age below 36 in uh, most of the time okay and in uh, more than 25 year old female so in multiparous gestational age below 36 and more to, than 25 year old uh, patient okay so that what happens the liver what about the kidney we to i talked about glomerular filtration rate okay decreasing glomerular filtration rate will also lead to oligoyuria oligoyuria what about the placenta in the placenta the ischemia will lead to infarction okay and if and this infarction will lead to iugr baby a small baby iugr baby because we have a placental insufficiency but if severe then we will have what uh, what uh, what we call a propsial placenta and i just explained uh, propsial placenta in previous video you can go back and watch it uh, so I use your baby these events are the result of the uh, widespread vasospasm and preeclampsia and that, that this is because of increasing in the vasoconstrictors and decreasing in the vasodilators like nitrous oxide and prostaglandin E2 but we have also another part of the story we have endothelial dysfunction endothelial dysfunction and we have reactive oxygen releasing 
reactive nitrogen releasing and the microparticles from apoptosis of the syncytiotrophoplast of the placenta so these three oxygen uh, reactive oxygen and reactive nitrogen and the microparticles from the apoptosis of syncytiotrophoplast will lead are toxins that will lead to endothelial injury endothelial injury and the endothelial injury will increase the capillary permeability and guess what this is the cause of edema <coughs> the edema in uh, preeclampsia the extravascular edema because the increased capillary permeability due to endothelial injury will lead to leakage of fluid from the intravascular fluid uh, compartment to the extravascular compartment from the intracellular compartment to the extravascular compartment and uh, this will lead to an edema previously edema was a condition uh, that is, uh, must be there to diagnose preeclampsia but not anymore okay because normally edema especially uh, lower limbs edema occurs normally in pregnancy in physiological cases of pregnancy uh, to distinct the edema of the normal pregnancy and the edema of preeclampsia uh, remember that the edema of preeclampsia is generalized edema of the head of the face of the hands okay but edema of uh, normal pregnancy will be mostly in the lower limbs just okay and this edema is why we don't give diuresis in preeclampsia in, but we can give viruses in one case in case of pulmonary edema pulmonary edema and the hypovolemia of uh, bec uh, that results from uh, decrease in the intravascular compartment will lead to decrease hematocrit decrease hematocrit okay endothelial injury also will lead to activation of coagulation system and that will lead to many serious problems like DICs okay and uh, other serious things that happen in preeclampsia. So this is the pathophysiology of preeclampsia. Uh, fear of cystitrophoblast to invade the spiral arteries will lead to placenta ischemia and release of toxins. Okay, uh, enter the circulation, so toxemia that leads to widespread inflammation, endothelial dysfunction, activation of coagulation system, and the toxins that or the widespread inflammation will increase the vasoconstrictors decrease the vasodilators really the symptoms of the preeclampsia but pressure proteinuria as i said okay and the endothelial dysfunction will release reactive oxygen reactive nitrogen and some particles from cystitrophoplast that lead to endothelial injury with capillary permeability increasing leading to edema <coughs> okay extravascular edema and activation of coagulation system with the IC and the proper placenta and so on okay thank you very much for watching see you in the next video uh, but I want to remind you that in proper placenta uh, the most important factor is actually hypertension disorders in pregnancy 50% uh, uh, preeclampsia and 25% chronic hypertension and 25% uh, gestational hypertension pregnancy thank you very much see you in the next video